what a month it's been. So much has happened. We've done a lot of work on the boat. We've uh, been on a sneaky trip to the Isle of Wight. Discovered a lot of problems with the rigging. Uh, completed our day skipper qualifications. And um, ordered a lot of stuff. So all sorts of stuff going into this episode. And I'll well, enjoy. Here's another uh, very small but probably very important boat job done. We've uh, cleaned up the cooker and hopefully fixed the lighting mechanism so that um, it stays light so we can cook dinner. Uh, it looks quite spiffing now we've polished it up. Um, fingers crossed it all works and this is, uh, well frankly it saved us well over a thousand pounds in new cooker if we bought the same one as this. Boy this is a very expensive cooker. Hmm. And here it is, the cooker is in. It still needs uh, its brackets putting in for these latches, but otherwise the cooker is in, it's clean, it's coupled up, it works, um, and that saved us a lot of money. Uh, I'm so very pleased that we took it home and cleaned it. We've got wiring jobs going on. We've got sorting out the fuel gauge done, and we're taking stuff out the back as well. Uh, sorting out the shore power and sorting out some of the old things that need to be removed. Oh, the boat's electrical system is an ongoing nightmare. There are still random cables that don't seem to go anywhere. Um, there are uh, odd connectors, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's odd, ra odd radio frequency connectors for antennas that are no longer in use everywhere. It really isn't in a great shape. There's plenty of cables, we just don't know where they all go. So I'm just down here measuring everything on the back here so that we're ready to fit our hydrovane, which is basically going to hang over the back right here. Ooh, a load of jellyfish on there. Right to hang over the back here, be a rudder in the water, and a wind vane up here, which is why this solar panel's got to go too. So there's a lot of work to do here in terms of finding out where things fit and eventually putting on a bracket here here and probably behind me in order to completely lock this thing in place and have us able to steer. Able to steer that is without us touching things automatically by the wind. It's a lovely day down here, no lot of wind, but when there is wind hydrovane will steer it. So that's the plan. So we keep coming down here, down to Southampton to do work on the boat and obviously it's a new hobby in many ways but it's a bit more than that. It's quite rewarding to think that everything we're doing is building us a home for next year. Um, everything from just putting in little lights to the whole installing the wind vane and putting in the solar panels, it's all making it into a, a cozy home for our family to live in next year. And that gives me a very warm, fuzzy feeling. Well, it's sunset on a last day of sitting around in the boat doing a hell of a lot of work on the wiring. It's really beautiful. Uh, we've got a lot done. The boat's a lot better prepared now than it was two days ago. We still need to add a lot of stuff, but it's beginning to feel like we could live in it. Um, it's beginning to feel like it could be a home for a whole year. And frankly, the sky's painted a beautiful colour, and it's just great sitting out here looking at it right now. With all this work, we were desperate to get sailing again, so we decided probably a bit optimistically, that we'd have a bit of an adventure and take the boat to a new marina. So off we went to Cows. Here we are, ready to go. Don't normally get this view.
Well, we are going nowhere because we've come out to do some sailing practice and have a sneaky little trip to the Isle of Wight. But uh, the wind speed at the moment is uh, one knot. <laughs> so we're pretty much just traveling with the tide down Southampton water at the moment. Uh, we've been trying to pass this tanker for about two minutes now. So this sailing block's a bit slow, isn't it? Heavy traffic day today. Are we sitting on this side so of the channel? We, we've got to stay on this side of the channel for a bit and then cross over to get to cows. Uh, but are we waiting for the red jet and the other big ship to pass or are we going to try and race across first? I think we've got to wait for the red jet because it's fast. I think we, then we should follow this ship, follow this ship and then hang, hang a left as we get, as, once the red jet's passed us. Haven. Um, in the end we had to whip out and motor because the tide was against us. There wasn't enough wind and then there was too much wind in the wrong direction and um, yeah, we got here. We have made it to Cowes, a um, bit windy at points and quite a lot of shipping traffic. Um, the kids are unconscious um, having been up since five o'clock this morning after the excitement of a sleepover and lots of playing with their friend and now me and Chris have got moored up. A little bit ropey, a bit of a rope in the water, a little bit of a splash, a bit of help. Otherwise, perfectly, Chris did a great job of steering our way in. We didn't hit anything. No, but we got in first time as well. And now, um, we need a copy. Definitely, copy, next step. Wow, it's really busy. This looks like all the racing teams are coming in. It was nice to see cows busy after all the COVID. So there we go. First trip to anywhere other than uh, our home mooring. We've, uh, we feel terribly adventurous. We've come across uh, to cows and um, it's a lovely sunset now, but boy, it was quite challenging getting over here. Um, the current was against us. At one point we were motoring um, at full power and doing about a knot backwards. Uh, we got the sails up, but it didn't seem to help. <laughs> we need to work on that. Yeah, we're hoping for a smoother sail back mm. tomorrow and yeah. less engine. Yeah, less engine, more sail, yeah. Brilliant. Ta-da, cow's yacht haven. At the end of a long day, we all went back to the boat for dinner. What do you think of cow's marina then? It seems like we're following the red jet. It is, yeah, this blasted red jet that lives next to us. It's here as well. <laughs> we're at one way and then the other. We've got a nice little sunset going on. Ooh, very nice sunset. We've had, in the words of Rose, burritos for dinner. And then we're going to go back and have Lirica coffee and a nice cookie. Mm. Or pudding. Unfortunately, it is a very long way to the toilet, which is where we happen to be going. So here it is, Sunday morning, Cows Harbour. We've now got the challenge of getting home. I don't know if you can hear, but it's, it's quite windy. It's not super windy, but quite windy. We're hoping we've got enough wind to fight the current back a little bit, so we can get back before the wind picks up to be uh, challenging, shall we say. Fingers crossed. Made it at the harbour and had the usual bat we putting fenders away. And then we think about hoisting the sails.
where we discovered uh, a problem. And our upper halyard sheave was jammed. The sail was a bit flappy, but uh, even with all this wind, we were still doing about six knots, despite the fact that we hadn't got the reefs right. Mm. We've seen some high numbers on this. We've had this up to 30 in the briefly today, so quite gusty from sailing weather. Kerry needs to buy a new coat because the zipper's failed, so every time we get splashed over the side she's getting a wet tummy. <laughs> but she can't wear her other coat because Rosie's wearing hers. Yes, well the girls need new coats. So we made it in, back to our mooring. It was a bit annoying. We actually ended up sort of over here against these other boats and we had to use someone else, gave us a hand, use a rope to pull us back in. Not ideal. We managed a good day sailing in probably fairly strong winds by our standards. So all in all, it wasn't a total loss. Following this trip we realised that we really did need to get the rigging properly serviced and we had a problem with the furler and we had a problem with the reefing lines, none of which is great when we're going to be trossing the ocean. So uh, after this we had the rigging inspected and that resulted in a trip to the boatyard, which is the subject of the next episode. So this is us uh, on uh, another boat, Santa Fe, and this is the boat that we're doing our practical day skipper course on. And um, it might seem strange to be doing this after we've done all the sailing, but it seems like a blooming good idea. And uh, we came to Scotland expecting it to be completely sort of frozen wastelands and needing thermals. And um, if you, uh, if you look out the window and, uh, and you find it is in fact fine. brilliantly sunny <laughs> and really very very nice indeed. Um, we're all going to be wearing sunglasses and um, sun hats, sun, sun cream hats. at the ready. <laughs> very excited to get going. Yeah, cool. Anything up before three, you'd never have a full sail. Uh, you would do, but if you were racing, yeah. So not for cruising. <laughs> not for cruising. <laughs> It's a good angle, that is. I've no idea if this can hear me or if it's just hearing loads of wind noise, but here I am, um, standing outside Port Ballantyne Marina. This is day three of our day skipper course, and we've come into this little marina having sailed through the Kyle of Butte. Uh, all the way uh, sailing in um, really quite strong winds with the boat heels over. Great fun. Um, I feel a lot more confident now we've, we've done that, that the boats can take a lot more. But uh, we've got a lot to learn. And tonight we're staying here in the wind. There we go. Hey! 